On April 1, 1966, Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson arrived at Washington's National Airport. Ahead of her lay a five-day journey through her native state of Texas. It was a visit which would fulfill a lifelong dream and serve to underscore her constant undying interest in maintaining and conserving a gift that all of her fellow Americans can share, the natural beauty of their country. First stop, San Antonio. The First Lady returns to the city of her marriage and is greeted at Hemisphere headquarters, the site of an international exposition scheduled for opening in 1968. The fair will feature the diversified cultures of Pan America, the history, art, religion, and socio-economic development of each of the nations of this hemisphere. Before leaving the headquarters, Mrs. Johnson is treated to a preview of Hemisphere. The red carpet is rolled out at La Villita, a part of the old city restored to its former state as a frontier village, and today the setting for a reception in honor of the First Lady's visit. Creating natural beauty on a national scale can begin with the planting of a single tree. Before dedicating a newly installed aesthetic lighting system along the Paso del Rio, Mrs. Johnson plants a seedling taken from the John Quincy Adams elm on the White House lawn. What is past is prologue, not only in the lives of all of us, but in the life of a city. As we gaze out over this gently moving water, it is as though a mirror is revealing the glorious heritage of San Antonio. Water is life. And so we are told the first Spanish explorers found an Indian village here in 1691. They named it San Antonio, as it was the feast day of St. Anthony of Padua. And what a glorious history it was to follow along these sloping river banks. All over the country, there is an awakening to the preservation of nature's endowments. As the lights go on tonight, I look out over the river 
with its grassy banks and cottonwoods and cypress and pecan and willow and mitama. All I can say is, this is America beautiful. Thank you. Fiesta King Antonio the 43rd escorts Queen Lady Bird down the music-filled, picturesque San Antonio River. of the evening, a song inspired by one of Mrs. Johnson's favorite expressions. Saturday morning, Presidio Airport, gateway to Big Bend. Than we saw a herd of antelope, which 
got us off to a marvelous start. And then this marvelous program, as I came down the line and, and saw the names of all the towns from that you had gathered from, I felt like that the whole geography of this part of, of Texas was unrolling before us. Thank you so much for this warm, warm welcome for the signs and, and for the uh, Sir Ross band coming out. And I also must say, oh it's long been a dream of mine to come to the Big Bend country. And the Big Bend Park itself has been a dream that was uh, several decades in the making. And I want to say thanks to all those people of West Texas who made it possible for that to be a gift to our nation. I know that Eamon Carter was one of those very instrumental in it. I'm looking forward to every moment of it. And thank you all for getting us all to such a warm and happy start. <laughs> that news of the First Lady's activities starts promptly on its way, a brief rendezvous with the Pony Express. Panther Junction. Big Bend Park Headquarters. Remote and unspoiled, Big Bend country has lain in relative obscurity for decades. In an area of wild, spectacular scenery, it lies along the United States-Mexican border and takes its name from the Great Bend course of the Rio Grande. The West Texas air, uncontaminated by smoke and exhaust fumes, works wonders on jaded Washington appetites. 
mi cariño se está muriendo por ir a buscar. Paloma negra, paloma negra, ¿dónde, dónde andará? Ya no juegues con mi honra, barrandera. Secretary of the Interior Stuart Udall and National Park Service Director George Hartzog officially welcomed the First Lady to Big Bend National Park. Across the country, the Park Service is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Entirely separated from civilization, in the vastness and solitude of an untamed land, the First Lady discovers that the simple things can be the most pleasant. Out of Big Bend National Park, most rugged in the national park system, rise the formidable Chisos Mountains. Chisos, Indian for ghost or spirit. Romantic legends abounding throughout the West are a cherished part of our American heritage. Early hard-living miners and settlers prompted tales of fabulous gold discoveries, lost mines, and mysterious clues. Up trail toward lost mine. Did it really exist, or was it merely a campfire fabrication? limitless reaches of unspoiled land, wilderness in its most beautiful and primitive state.
Sunset Point, the window, Casa Grande Peak. The Big Bend country has worked its spell. kept in the stone box, and water runs uphill, and the mountains float in the air, except at night when they go away to play with other mountains. So you sit here tonight in a forbidding land amid friendly people. Not far from here, a Spaniard team. Longer remain and starve like the dog on my government plain. To Rosaline County, the land of the free, the land of the great, of her big bullion flea. We'll sing of her praises, we'll shout out her fame, while starving to death on our government plain. Sunday morning, flapjacks, bacon, and coffee. Insurance against the early morning chill, served up by the Odessa Chuckwagon Gang. Nature in its rugged grandeur serves as a cathedral for Palm Sunday services. To commemorate her visit to Big Bend, the First Lady plants a pinion tree, symbolic of her desire to promote and conserve the country's rustic beauty. National resource, scenic wonder, and international boundary, the Rio Grande supports a flotilla of more than 20 rubber rafts on an historic five and a half hour, 11 mile voyage through Mariscal Canyon. On a river that, according to the natives, is too thick to drink and too thin to plow, the rafts move slowly in geographic limbo between two countries, the United States on one side and Mexico facing it from the other.
With sheer canyon walls rising awesomely to the sky on either side, the party pauses briefly for lunch on Rattlesnake Sandbar. Resulting in their wilderness experience, Tenderfoot members of the group lend a hand with paddle and advice. Wet feet, sunburn, and utter exhaustion. The products of what one press corps member described as one of the most loony and delightful safaris of modern time. Monday, April 4th, Fort Davis, capsulated Americana. Latter-day link between San Antonio and El Paso. Headquarters for Indian fighters. And today, its restoration to be dedicated by the First Lady. Mr. Secretary, Nellie Conley, my friends of West Texas, it certainly is a pleasure, especially after some of my experiences of the last two days in Big Bend National Park, to enjoy with you this remarkable restoration of old Fort Davis and the construction of a new visitor center. Today, again, we see the past as prologue. We are looking beyond the present trials and great personal sacrifices of Vietnam to protect and preserve a part of our past. It is now with a deep sense of gratitude that I dedicate Fort Davis National Historic Site. My gratitude extends like the land which surrounds us in all directions. The rendition of the national anthem as it might have been played during the early days of Fort Davis proves especially fitting for this occasion.
Tuesday, April 5th, Courthouse Square, Johnson City. Linda furthers her mother's beautification efforts by planting six live oak trees dedicated to her paternal grandparents, Sam Ely and Rebecca Johnson. I went to school here in Johnson City, and so I have a special love for it myself. And I know it meant a very lot to my grandparents. My grandmother spent a lot of time telling you about the time when she, was, she lived in Johnson City and her many experiences here. And so, because of my love for my grandparents and my love for Johnson City and the wonderful things that it gave me, I wanted to have these trees planted here. And I particularly wanted to have trees because I've always been a little jealous of them. I've always wanted to have my roots in the ground and my head in the stars. Thank you. The beautification of our nation and the protection of its natural resources is the duty and responsibility of each citizen. The crusade against ugliness demands cooperation, energy, and the determination of all. We've had two days of wilderness, blue skies, clear air, and I think we are immeasurably better for it. From experiences in the park, hiking the Lost Mine Trail, floating the Rio Grande through Mariscal Canyon, standing on the heights and looking from yesterday into tomorrow, I can better understand the courage, stamina, and drive of the pioneers who push back the western frontier. We still have time to walk back in our past, still have time to preserve our heritage for the guidance of future generations. While we continue to explore new frontiers in outer space, we must exert more effort in making the world we live in a better and more attractive place to work, to play, and to raise our families.